Starfield came out recently, and you and I have both been playing quite a bit of it. Yeah, Mike hates it. Mike hates Starfield. He hates it with every fiber of his being. Why don't we talk about it in great detail and our personal <laughs> experiences with it? And we'll start off with you, since you seem to be having a fanciful time. I, I have, at this point, over 100 hours in the game. I absolutely... I, I, I love it. I think it's great. That's kind of surprising. Is it, is it perfect? Absolutely not. It is not. There's no, no way in hell is this game perfect. <laughs> if I had to give a rating of this game right now, based on everything I've played, I wouldn't even give it a 9 out of 10. I'd say it's like an 8. It's a Bethesda game, so it's like, it's an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10 game that you absolutely adore. I, I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of... There, dude, there's games that are like a freaking 6 out of 10 that I absolutely love. All right. But anyway, to me, this feels like the best RPG that Bethesda has made since... Fallout 3 when they were actual RPGs and not just yeah, yeah, action shooters? Since, since Fallout 3. I mean, the RPG aspect and the structure of Starfield reminds me of Fallout New Vegas. Okay. The, the gameplay feels like Fallout 4. To me, it feels like Bethesda, when they started working on this game, they went, what do people like about Fallout and Skyrim and blah, blah, blah? <laughs> what did people like about those? They like the speech options in Fallout New Vegas because that's everyone. No, nobody will shut up about that. They shut up. They, they won't shut up about how great the speech options were hmm. and how it actually felt like a role playing game. And to be completely honest, the actual gameplay of Fallout New Vegas is not great. I'm willing to concede that perhaps the gunplay and the combat is dated. Yeah, and the quest design might be simple. Like, well, no, I wouldn't say the quest design is simple, but like the 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 way the the way the quests are written and the dialogue that you can have with other characters. I feel like they looked at that and they went, okay, we need to put as much of that in this game as we can. And then because because Starfield is just in the Fallout 4 engine, it's just the same engine they've been working with for God only knows how long now, they just used that. Which, to be fair, is it feels good. That, that engine feels good to use. Mm -hmm. Or to, to play in. So, to me, it feels like Bethesda looked at their previous titles and went, why did people enjoy these? Let's try to put the things that people enjoyed from those into this. What would you say is Starfield's biggest strengths? I guess, like, there's a couple things. I have stuff written down. I'm going to try to kind of go... Well, you did an entire 10-minute video yeah, on your channel. I did I did a 10-minute video. And that was only at, like, 24 hours yeah, in the game. At 24 hours, you had already started to enjoy the game. And since then, your love for it has only grown? I would say I'm still enjoying it about the same amount. Okay. I, I really I really like it. I think it's really good. All right. You were asking, like, what what I think is its strong suit. I I really feel like they, they, they went, we need to make an actual role-playing game. Because I've had, I've had multiple quest lines where... A majority of the quest is just talking to people or passing speech checks or asking, like, just getting different dialogue options. And shooting is usually a last resort. Unlike Fallout 3 and 4, there's a lot more actual role-playing in this game. It's not just, you're James's kid or you're Sean's parent. Mm -hmm. I've had multiple instances where perks I picked at the beginning of the game or perks I picked after leveling up have popped up as dialogue options. Like, I've had where I'm talking to somebody and one of the options is... Because I picked the security perk, and I can talk to them about how I think this company's security is shit, and I can, <laughs> it's really easy for me to, it was really easy for me to do this thing. Yeah, perk checks. Which is really cool, and I like that that's in there. I had an instance yesterday, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any spoilers. Oh yeah, that, we should mention that we're probably gonna try and avoid spoilers as best we yeah, can. We're, we're gonna talk about the factions a little bit, and how their quest lines play out, at least yeah. I will, but we'll try to avoid... Any major spoilers? I haven't even seen the majority of the game, so I'm going to easily avoid spoilers that way. I had a moment the other day where I completed a little random side quest, which is where I think this game really, really shines, is the amount of different side quests and random events that happen. That's where I think this game really shines. What you can say to people is, like, whoever wrote these dialogue lines needs to be given a fucking award. <laughs> um, They're fun. The writing is fun at times. I had a moment the other day when I was playing, where I completed a side quest, and I had saved before I had started the side quest, I went back and did it three more times because I wanted to see how the different ways that you could do it would play out. Okay. Which I never do. No. In these games. I haven't done that since Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> was new. All right. Like, in Fallout 4, I didn't give a shit. It was yeah. just like, what? Because every single speech option was the same. To be fair, the, the, the side quest I did... It kind of was like that. When I was talking to this person, it basically was, you have to do this thing. You, you are locked in this room and you cannot leave until you do the thing. So it's a linear quest line. It is a linear quest line. However, there's multiple ways to resolve it. 
and you can talk to them and get more information about the thing that you're supposed to do before you go about doing it. Okay. Yeah, you can just you can just be like, perp derp, I'm going to do it because this guy told me to do it. <laughs> you right. can do that. That is actually one of the ways that can play out. Mm -hmm. And what I mean about like the, the dialogue options you can pick is when I completed this, one of the characters said, why did you do that? And one of my speech options was, I don't know, sometimes I just do things. <laughs> I don't deny it. This game has some fun writing at times. It's got some really fun writing at points. It's like some of these responses are absolutely hilarious. And it reminds me of playing Fallout New Vegas where you had some of these speech options that were just like, it's really funny just to pick that one. Maybe it's not the best one, but like, man, it's hilarious. <laughs> I feel like the the relevant perks that you can that you can pick in this game because I mentioned that they'll like come up. So I feel like the relevant perks you can pick like like uh, I know you pick the kid stuff perk or like I pick like the neon street rat. Yeah. Uh, Wanted is another one. I feel like they show up in dialogue about as frequently as they did in Fallout New Vegas. Mm -hmm. I would say it comes up quite a lot. It's a different way to say yes to a quest essentially. Yeah. And sometimes those those options they give you a different ending to a quest. I've had I've had. Two, uh, two times I can think of off the top of my head where because I had picked an option or because I had done a specific quest, like for example, you can join the, 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 the uh, United Colonies Vanguard, which is basically like a civilian paramilitary fleet. It's a military organization. Or like a, fo like, like a forest rangers and triple A and also they, they can do anyway. Yeah. I was doing a completely unrelated, not related to the, the United Colonies Vanguard in any way. I was doing a quest. And that perk popped up that I could say something to somebody because I was in the, the United Colonies Vanguard that ended in the quest resolving in a different way than it would have normally. Cool. Which is really neat. And it, it makes me wonder, like, well, if I play it in a different way, will that, like, what quests are going to be affected by that? Yeah. Neither of us took the adoring fan perk, but I am interested in seeing how that plays out. Apparently, apparently the adoring fan is an absolute murder machine if you give him... <laughs> well, it's probably because the people I've seen have, that have him have given him a really good gun. I never played... See, I was comparing this game to Fallout New Vegas. I never played Morrowind, but I've seen a lot of people comparing this game to... Saying that this game is Morrowind in space. Maybe. I've, I never played Morrowind. I'm not I have either, no so I idea. I can't speak on that. I don't know. But to me, it feels like Fallout New Vegas, but in space. It now, doesn't... It, that's Pretty high praise to, to, to and comparing anything to New Vegas, which is obviously one of our favorite games since we've been playing it on the channel for seven years. It really helps that um, there's a there's literally like a cowboy planet, which is which is kind of <laughs> funny. I believe that's what you see in the uh, Free Star Collective quest line. Yeah, the Free Star Collective is kind of like space cowboys, I've only... especially especially uh, Aquila City, which is the the main Free Star Collective city. Yeah, I've only just started playing the uh, FC quest line, so mm -hmm. I only started. I've only touched down on that planet, but it did have that feel to it. So like I. I feel like they did a really good job of introducing you to the world, the, the universe this game takes place in, or the galaxy, I guess. I feel like they did a really good way of introducing you to it without dumping stuff onto you. I know you didn't particularly like it. Yes, the, the way they teach you about the world is basically you go, you get to walk through a museum. And I thought that was really cool. I really liked that. It certainly is better than reading logs or being given a lore dump. I, yeah, I, I think that's way better than having just a 20 minute long exposition dump from an NPC or just this text log that's just, that just goes on and on and on and on. I thought that was really cool. The other thing I thought was really cool about that, I don't know how much of that museum you actually went through. When you go through the museum and you talk to the guy, he'll actually have different responses for you based on how much of the museum you went through. Really? Yeah. If you actually listen to all of them, he's like, oh, that scores really, that shows that you pay attention and you have an interest in... In this you're not just in it for the money hmm. which is which i thought was really cool i actually went again i went back through and just didn't read any of them just to see what he said and he's he's like yo all right man <laughs> well i mean at least you scored highly on the flight portion uh anyway <laughs> uh i thought that was really cool also it, it, at the literally at the very beginning of the game uh when you take off in the the ship the, the frontier and Bosco is like, oh, we have to go to this planet and stop these raiders because otherwise they're they're not going to leave us alone. Yes. You do a little side quest, a little layover because you're being attacked by pirates, so you got to take out their encampment. Yeah. When you go to the Xeno Warfare tech building, which is what that is, if you actually read the, the, the little terminals that's in there, even that is like, that gives you a decent amount of backstory about it. Okay. And, it's, and like reading the terminal, it's really interesting. It, it gives you a lot of... 
It gives you a lot of information without some guy being like, well, in 2323, the Freestar Collect... It's just like, I, I don't want some dude to just... Vomit the information. Yeah. yeah. Also, in regards to joining the, the United Colonies Vanguard, that actually... Uh, that actually kind of reminded me of the enlistment ceremony when you join the army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, it was, I, I felt like Fond it was... feelings of nostalgia bubbling up. Kind of, not necessarily nostalgia, but it did make me feel something, which was a little strange. <laughs> I was like, why is this making me feel something? <laughs> and I, I think it was because, it, so it was somewhat analogous to, like, current day enlisting in the military. And I, I think it was because they actually did, they actually did some research into what it's like enlisting or what what the enlistment ceremony for joining the military is like mm -hmm. i realized the way the reason it made me kind of feel something was because well one because that was a major part of my life was joining the military and two because it's not like when you join the brotherhood of steel in fallout 3 or fallout 4 or like when you join the ncr in fallout new vegas where like if you join the ncr in fallout new vegas they, the entire time they're just like no you're just a contractor you're like, you're not actually in the NCR. Right. You're not an NCR citizen. But like in Fallout 3 and 4, it's just like, oh boy, you're in the Brotherhood of Steel now, and congratulations, now you're second in command. Hmm. It's, I thought that was, I, I don't know, it it made me, it did actually make me feel something, and I thought that was, that was interesting. The middle ground, not being quite an outsider working as a contractor, and also not quite being immediately promoted to second in command, but you're, you're just a member of an organization you might yeah. agree with. I feel like they actually did research for stuff as opposed to Fallout 4 where it's just like it's absolutely nothing like how it would be in the real world. But anyway, I know it's a video game. I guess admittedly I don't have as much experience with like the main characters of like Constellation. But most of the NPCs I have interacted with have felt way more fleshed out than like Fallout 4, for example. Also, the amount of voice actors that are in this game... That is a lot better, definitely. I Oh my god, it makes it so much better than hearing... The same 12 ones over and over again. Dick Valentine voices everybody. <laughs> yeah. Nick Valentine's one-man play in in, Sky, <laughs> or in Skyrim. Or Fallout 4, yeah. Well, he's, yeah. he's just he's Nick Valentine. No, he's Nick Valentine, he's Dima, he plays Mister all the Mr. Handy robots. Dima? Well, I haven't even played the Far Harbor DLC, so how would I know? Oh, yeah, that's fair. I will not deny that they have made a lot of improvements on a technical level for this game. Yeah, so like all the different random NPCs have felt way more fleshed out. I found uh, I found the woman that voices Cass in, <laughs> oh, yeah. in, in Starfield. Mm. She plays just a completely random character, and that's like the only one she plays. I thought it was really funny because at this point, I have found I found four sassy redheaded characters. <laughs> and I'm like, somebody working at Bethesda's got a type. <laughs> I know it. Because why else? The, the woman that... I forget what her name is. Um, the, the woman that played Cass in Fallout New Vegas. She's only been in three things. Mm. She's been in a movie in like 2008. I think it's called The Journal. She's been in Fallout New Vegas. And now she's been in Starfield. And those are the only three things she's been in. <laughs> and I'm convinced that somebody at Bethesda was like, No, I love Cass! We're putting <laughs> her in this game! All right. Yeah, but I've, I've met like four sassy redheads... And I'm just like, someone, somebody at Bethesda knows exactly what they like, and they keep putting it in here in different places. And I'm just like, why can't I bring any of them on my ship? Um, yeah, there's, so there's a much wider variety of voice actors now. The game is very stable. I haven't had any crashes, to be honest. Um, yeah, I have noticed some bugs. I've noticed some kind of weird bugs that happen. Oh yeah, this game is still buggy. I can talk it's, about the bugs I've experienced and the ones you've experienced, but it doesn't crash as much. I haven't... I think I have had one crash to desktop. When I first installed the game, I was unaware of the fact that it has to be installed on an SSD. That's something we can talk about. There's some there's some hardware limitations to this game, which I'm not happy about. This game definitely required me to get a new PC. You had suggested that I get a new PC for editing a while ago, and I was very hesitant. I pushed back against it. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I acquiesced, and I'm glad I did because my current, my old PC cannot run Starfield at any meaningful capacity. It needs to have an SSD. And the CPU I had wasn't working. It was getting bottlenecked there. Yeah. One of the things I have heard from some people is that this game does not really like running on NVIDIA graphics cards. I know you have an NVIDIA. Mm. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's been a problem for you, but I've talked to a couple uh, I've talked to one other content creator, uh, Krusty, his his YouTube channel is I Am Krusty, mm. who straight up cannot record this game because it will not run on his computer. Oh wow. It just will not play with his graphics cards. Apparently, when they were designing this game, they worked really heavily with AMD. 
I have an AMD graphics card, so it hasn't really been giving me any issues. I did not know when I first downloaded the game that it had to be installed on an SSD. Mm. So when I first downloaded the game, I had it on one of my big chunky hard drives, and it made so many problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had... I don't have any footage of it because I almost immediately realized what was happening once I found out that it had to be on an SSD. Mm. But I had... The audio was desynced by, like, seconds. Oof. Two to upwards of seven second desync of audio. Mm. Like someone would be talking to me, their mouth would finish moving, and then four or five seconds later, the, the audio would start coming through. Mm. I had weird loading screen bugs. I had a bug when I was first playing the game after I installed it on an SSD where my ship took off and the outside of my ship stayed on the launch pad <laughs> and the inside of my ship is what took off into space. <laughs> That was, I think, the only time the game crashed to desktop is that happened and I was in space and I was like, what the fuck? And I tried to load a previous save to get it to fix itself and it crashed to desktop. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't happened since then. Okay. So is this game perfect? No, there's a lot of bugs. And I have heard from some people that it does not like to play with NVIDIA graphics cards. Yeah, there is no doubt there's some bugs. It's a, it's an ambitious game. It tries to do a lot, and you have experienced bugs, and I have experienced bugs. What fun bugs have you experienced? Anything noteworthy? Well, that one I just told you about. That that one's not maybe not as fun. That's a that's a unplayable game crashing bug. But what are some of the the Bethesda isms, the jankiness? Ah, uh, I've noticed a couple times people will like. I, there's obviously the thing everyone keeps talking about is the way the way uh, NPCs eyes look. They they all kind of have like the bug eyes. They which blink re really loudly. Yeah. Like, you can hear them blinking. They got, like, the bug eyes. Their eyes stick out. And if you move the camera, put the camera in third person and move it, like, move the angle down mm -hmm. into where you don't want to take a, uh, where you don't want to take a Tinder selfie from. Okay. You want to take the Tinder selfie from up, not down. That's mm -hmm. just, it's pro tip for you guys. Sure. Don't take the Tinder selfie from underneath your chin. Take it from above your chin because then it makes you look better. Anyway, if you move the camera down into that zone, your character will be like, mm. <laughs> it's like the, it's. It's really not flattering. Mm. Um, everyone's eyes are kind of watery. Like, way more watery than they would be in real life. Which is... It's a weird effect of it. <sighs> what are some other weird bugs? I've had a bug a couple times where my ship will be on the launch pad. And then the game has somehow loaded a second instance of my ship. Mm. So if I go into the cockpit... If I open the door to where the cockpit is and go in there and then turn around... It looks as though the door is closed mm -hmm. and I can just walk right through it. Okay. Which is really, it's really, and then when you sit down in the captain's chair, like, depending on what kind of ship you have, the chair will, like, rotate or move forward or mm -hmm. whatever. There's a little animation for you getting getting into and out of it. It'll be Schrodinger's chair. Will it both exist in the state of me not sitting in it and me sitting in it at the same time? Hmm. Which is a little weird. I had uh, where, like, a ship that I had was sitting on the launch pad, mm. and I went and changed what ship. Because I have, like, five ships that I can pick from right oh, now. Oh, okay, fancy. I had a ship sitting on the launch pad, and I changed what ship it was. And then the old ship was still sitting on the launch pad, and the new ship was just sitting inside of it. Mm -hmm. And I actually <laughs> couldn't figure out how to get into the ship because there were textures <laughs> colliding with each other. So I had to just go directly into the cockpit of the ship as opposed to, like, walk through the inside of it. I think I had that bug, too. Either that or Roscoe was trying to gyrate on my face while I'm driving. That's really Vasco. annoying. Yeah, Va yep. I had, oh yeah, I had Andrea was just, like, standing on top of my head, <laughs> which was really annoying. Mm -hmm. That was slightly irritating. What some other, glitches, yeah. Yeah, what are what are some other weird bugs that I've had? Um, I noticed you had an autosave bug in the middle of dying. Yeah, that was right at the beginning of the game, so that bug is still that that bug is still present. You were fighting a big bug, and then the game autosaved while you were in the combat, so you would just load and die two seconds later, and then load. Yeah, <laughs> that happened again later when I was piloting a ship. <laughs> okay. Where basically it it saved right as combat was initiated with a bunch of other ships that were way over my level. Mm -hmm. So basically, I would load in, and then immediately seven ships are shooting at me, and I'm blowing up in like three seconds. Oh, jeez. So I and the the worst part was because I still haven't learned my goddamn lesson of saving often. Uh, I had to go back like I think I lost like an 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. of gameplay, which was fine honestly because most of what I was doing was just jetting from one system to another one and exploring shit. Mm. So I didn't really lose anything, but it's just like. The, the fact that I could have lost right. quite a bit. Yeah. And that's on me for not saving enough. Eh, yeah, sure. There's also the general jitteriness. Sometimes you pick an item up and it shakes around violently. Yeah, that's a little... That's kind of, I've had that happen a couple times. I had a... Um, I, I, again, I had it on stream. I had one of the... like There's like weightlifting weights. Mm -hmm. 
Dumbbells. Yeah, there's like dumbbells. And one of them got like stuck in a garbage can. So I was like shaking the garbage can <laughs> in game to try to get the dumbbell to pop out of it. And it did eventually, mm -hmm. which I was also kind of amazed that that actually worked. There was a character that I recruited for my crew that didn't have any lip syncing. So I, That's they, weird. every time I spoke to them, their lips didn't move. They were a ventriloquist. Was that crewman's name Jeff Dunham by, by any means? <laughs> no, it was just generic crewman. Okay. One of the things that's really annoying is if you do any modifications to your ship whatsoever, when you first get a ship, or if you wait a long enough time in-game, I haven't figured out how much time that is in-game, mm. but a bunch of random clutter will pop in on your ship. Mm. So there'll be like, you know, like a bottle of beer or like, like dumbbells or just stuff will appear inside your ship and it makes it look more lived in. Mm. The problem is if you modify your ship in any way, all of that stuff goes into your ship's inventory and it's a lot of stuff. Mm. And you can't do anything with it other than have it sit in your ship. Right. Which is one of the, the, the random junk and you not being able to do with it is one of the complaints that I can get to later. That means that anytime you modify your ship, you now have to go into your inventory and sell all that junk to somebody. Yeah. Which is annoying. Especially if you modify your ships as much as I do. <laughs> you do seem to be enjoying that quite a lot. I really like doing the ship modification. Mm -hmm. I hate doing crafting. I hate crafting. I hate base building. I love doing the ship modification. Well, at least you and I will be in agreement that we don't much care for the crafting system. We'll talk about the crafting system now. The reason I don't like the crafting system in Starfield is because in Fallout, in Fallout New Vegas, all the random junk that was laying around, like Wonder Glue or whatever... Mm. They, they tried to do a crafting system, and it was okay. Yeah, New Vegas' crafting system was rudimentary, and it didn't get used all that much. And, like, basically, when you're playing New Vegas, I keep joking about this on the channel. When you're playing New Vegas, there's a bunch of junk laying around, like beer bottles <laughs> and all this other stuff. Don't pick it up, because then it just sits in your inventory and you do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. In Fallout 4, the thing I liked about Fallout 4 was all the junk in-game, you could scrap it and use its base components. Mm -hmm. And you got more base components by picking the scrapper perk. Which, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'll leave that up to you to decide. It's what... I, I feel like that if I if I smash a freaking typewriter onto the ground 20 times, I'll get more than two springs and a screw from sure, it. Sure, sure. Anyway, if I break down a pistol, I'll get more than steel, and that's it. Mm. Anyway, whatever. It was, it was nice that when you were playing Fallout 4, you could just be like, oh, well, I'm going to need screws and springs and gears for this thing, and I know that all three of those things are in a desk fan or a typewriter or whatever. Mm. You, you know that those things are in there. In Starfield, they went back to the junk does nothing. It doesn't do anything. There's no reason to pick up miscellaneous stuff now hmm. because you can't scrap any of it. All the components you need to craft things are their own thing, which is really annoying because like I have, for example, I have like two, I have like two research projects that I need to do. I'll go to the research projects in a second. I have two research project projects that I need to complete that I need polymer for. And for the, for probably about a good hour, I was like, oh, I need polymer? Well, this probably has polymer in it. Or this, it's like, it's a it's a coffee cup carrier. That probably has polymer in it. Or <laughs> like this little, this little sealed container. That probably has polymer in it. Nope, none of that does. You're looking for literally an item called polymer. And when you look at the item in game, it's a container filled with little beads. That says polymer on the side. It says polymer <laughs> on it. Yeah. I don't like that they removed the crap or they removed the scrapping aspect from Fallout 4. Hmm. That's one of the reasons that I hate crafting because now it makes all the junk useless unless you want to pick it up. Like I found a wooden duck, which I picked up and I just display it in my ship. There's a lot of stuff you can pick up that just looks nice. You can put it somewhere. Yeah, that's and that's all it does, which is a little annoying. I also the other thing I don't like about crafting in this game, not only do I have to have the components to craft that, I also have to have the perk that allows me to craft it. Yeah. And not only do I have to have the perk that allows me to craft it, if I want to make a red dot sight for my pistol, I have to, one, have the perk that I need for it. Two, I have to go to a research station and put more components into that research station to allow me to then craft the red dot sight. So it is now a three-step process to craft a red dot sight for a gun. You have to have the perk... The research be completed, and then all the components you need. Yes, the crafting system is not great. And I'll bring it up a bit more later when I start getting into all my complaints about the game. Because I've got some grievances I'm going to air about the game. Yeah. But since we're talking spe specifically about the crafting system right now, I will say that it's very reminiscent of Mass Effect Andromeda's crafting system. Ew. Which was bad. I've been, I've been investing in the weapon crafting perk, 
when you remove a mod, if I take a red dot sight off of a rifle, mm. that red dot sight is gone forever. You're saying it doesn't even go to storage. No, it doesn't go to storage. It's gone forever. Oh. You lose all... It, you If you made a red dot sight for a gun, mm -hmm. and then you think, I don't really want the red dot sight. Maybe I want a scope. You put the scope on it, and then you realize that I fucking hate the scope. I want to go back to the red dot sight. You now have lost the... Ingredients and you've the scope. You've lost the ingredients mm. for making the red dot sight, and you've lost the ingredients for making the scope. And now you have to make another red dot sight. Mm. Unlike in Fallout 4, where if you find a gun and you like the red dot sight on the gun, but everything else about the gun is garbage, you can just remove the red dot sight and then slap that red dot sight on a different gun. All right. I hate that you cannot do that in this game. More qualms with the crafting system in this game. And again, that's a problem I have with the crafting system. Mm -hmm. I don't like survival crafting games i've played enough of them don't tell me oh you might like this one no i don't like survival crafting games all right i don't like that a lot of the weapons are like random drop weapons because like i was doing a mission the other day where you open a door and then as soon as you get into this room there's a chest in front of you and the chest has a bunch of has like one higher rarity item okay. and then a bunch of other random items and i realized that that chest generates the item in it only after you've opened the door. So basically what the game had just presented to me was... An opportunity to save scum. A roulette machine that I could just keep running it until I got an item that I wanted. And because I got, I got the special brain and the item I got the first time wasn't perfect. <laughs> I am not kidding. I did. I did. Look what's in the chest. Don't like it. Options. Load. Load the, load the save over. Open the door. Look what's in the chest. I don't like it. I did that for 45 minutes. Just cycling through. Because my brain would not let me, my brain, and this is, this is a problem of, this is a problem of my brain is stupid and I hate my brain. Okay. Because I'm just stuck, I'm, I'm stuck in a gacha game now of, <laughs> I want, I want a good item. Stop giving me helmets. Mm. At the end of this quest line, I get a really cool helmet. I don't want a helmet. Yeah, all right. Stop giving me helmets. Stop giving me power boost packs. I don't want those. I want a good gun. I did that for 45 minutes until eventually, Jeez. until eventually I got a gun that had something I kind of liked on it. And I was just like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I just spent 45 minutes save scumming this stupid <laughs> save over and over again. Without the headphones on because I'm tired of listening to this person say the first three lines of their dialogue. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of doing it. You sure you like this game? I that... do I do like this game. I do really like this All game. Right. And that is more of a problem with me than a problem with the game. All right. I miss Fallout New Vegas when they had uniques. Just kind of strewn about for you to find? I miss Fallout New Vegas where they had uniques. I miss Skyrim where they have uniques. You don't like this randomly generated thing? I so don't like randomly generated... I do like the concept of it being unique every time you play through and there's no guaranteed good gun somewhere stashed away. I don't I don't like that. Well, the, the thing is, there are guaranteed good guns stashed away. Oh. Certain vendors have named guns. Well, I don't think that should be the case, but I guess... One whatever. of the vendors has a named gun, and it's it's just a normal gun, but it has specific perks on it. So, mm. like, it's the same thing as in Fallout 4, where there's, like, the, the Overseer's Guardian. And Spray and Prey, yeah. And Spray and Prey. There are those, like, named guns, but there's not that many of them. Okay. It's not like in Fallout New Vegas, where there's tons of them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the system they chose to implement. You had said that you, you, you thought the premise was, was not very good. Yeah. I wasn't sold on the UC versus FC. Then I, also like I feel like the premise is exactly the same as every other Bethesda game. It's not necessarily great, it's but... During the intro, you become the Lone Wanderer, or the Soul Survivor, or the Courier, or the Dragonborn, and now you have to go out and explore the world that they have created. And I, I do... I actually like that. I don't, I don't think that's bad. It's like, it's, it works. It ain't broke. Keep going with it. Mm. The beginning of this game reminds me of the beginning of Mass Effect. Well, very much so in the sense that you touch an artifact and you see a vision and then you're immediately venerated as one of the most important people in the universe. Some guy hands you his spaceship because you saw a vision. To be fair, he also had the exact same thing happen to him, so he understands. And yeah. By, and by vision, I mean a bunch of flashing colors and lights that don't really have any meaning. I'm not positive, but I think the more pieces of that you find, the more stuff starts getting revealed to you. That would make sense. I think. I found about six so far. I hadn't really meant much to me but maybe by the end of the game it'll start to make a lot more sense oh so you're finding a lot more oh so you're just like you're just burning down the constellation quest huh i have been following a lot of quest lines i would say i've been sticking a lot more to traditional quest lines than you have probably what i have found and this is this is my personal experience i haven't done a lot of the constellation quest line but i honestly feel like the constellation quest is kind of the weakest one 
How many quest lines have you played? Because there's the UC, FC, Ryujin. I haven't completed any of... I'm very close to completing the Ryujin quest line. Have you tried the other ones? I have joined the Vanguard. I have not joined the... FC? Uh, the FC Rangers. I have not joined the Freestar Collective Rangers. I have the option to go do that. I haven't done it yet. Um, I did the the thing where, like, when you first get to uh, Aquila City, there's the bank robbers. Yeah, yeah. I did that. How did you handle that, by the way? Uh, spoiler, you do start off at the town of Aquila by resolving a bank robbery in progress. Yeah. Um, I managed to talk them down. Everyone out there, no, Zach just solves all his problems with a shotgun. I actually, 99% of the time, I try to resolve everything by just talking to people. Yeah, it's fun that because way. Because it's... There's it's, already so much combat in the game. Yeah, there's there's a decent... If I want to go shoot a bunch of spacers, I'll just go land on a planet and find a find a base with a bunch of spacers on it and then shoot them. Mm -hmm. Or I'll do one of the radiant quests, which are go here and kill raiders. I'm sorry, spacers. <laughs> which, is just, which is just on a bounty board. I love that they have a bounty board. So I'm not just going up to an NPC and he's like... Hey, uh, go here and kill this dude. And then you gotta report back to him afterwards. Nah, yeah. It's nice that that's not... It's that. nice that you just go to a bounty board and it's like, go fly here and blow up this ship. Okie dokie, you fly there and as soon as the ship's blown up or all the all the guys on board the ship are killed, you get money. Bounty boards are, I guess, where the designated Radiant quests are. You can ignore them if you want to. Yep. Like I will be. I have, I have had a couple times where I've landed some... Or I've just gone up to a random NPC and they're like... Oh man, we've got a bunch of spacers that won't leave us alone. So I have had that happen a couple times. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just like, go to a different part on the planet and kill more spacers. So like, whatever. But most of the main quest lines that I have done have been talking to people, passing speech checks, using the perks that I have, and gunfire is the last resort. Gun if, if it gets to a point where I'm shooting at people in a main quest line... I usually am like, well, I need to go back and fix this because I goofed <laughs> this up somewhere along the line. I really screwed up. And like the, the nice thing is you can just go through the game and just shoot everybody. If you're going to play like a, I'm a Crimson Fleet bad guy raider, mm -hmm. you can just go through the game just blasting people. It makes the game a little bit more difficult because now you're wanted in a bunch of different areas, yeah. but you can do it. Yeah, to me, this game has really felt like Fallout New Vegas, but in space. I really feel like I'm playing a character that I made and I'm not playing a character that some Bethesda employee came up with that I got to maybe pick a couple perks for. Okay. I've really enjoyed it. Just like even so much as not playing the main quest and just exploring and seeing what there is in this universe that they made is really cool. Now, when you say exploring, you're going to have to elaborate on that because I have tried to explore before and uh, that usually just entails fast traveling from random husk of a planet to random husk of a planet, a, a barren moon, poking around looking for rocks at the abandoned military facility there. And yeah, that is that is one thing I do. I do actually kind of enjoy. Or I do actually enjoy doing that. Just going to a planet and then just trying to check everything off on the 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 the, um, the survey list. The survey list. One of the things I will point out, if you can find them, it's because they're like procedurally generated. If you can find a thing called a research tower on a planet and go through it and kill all the raiders or spacers or whoever the hell is in there, when you finish the research tower, it will actually complete any survey data for that planet that you have missed. Handy. Which is really, the problem is finding the research towers. Yeah. When I say exploring, I mean like I'm going to planets, I'm talking to different NPCs, because like it seems like almost everyone that I talk to that is a named character named NPC hmm. almost everyone I talk to has something that they can that you can do for them okay like I went to I went to neon which is um which I is, yeah I've not been to the city of neon yet neon is really cool it's really neat I was oh my god so I'm doing the the Ryujin quest line which takes place on neon okay and at one point during this quest I had to go to a different area on neon and it, by this point like I said I have over a hundred hours in the game I've been doing stuff for neon for 10 hours now? Okay, or I've been wow. doing stuff on Neon for 10 hours. I still haven't talked to the mayor of the city. <laughs> I still haven't done anything with that. I was doing a quest for them, and they were like, oh, go down to this bar and talk to talk to this hacker that's down at the bar. I'm like, okay. Hmm. And the quest marker points me to a door that I didn't even know was in the main concourse of Neon. Okay. I go in the door, and it brings me to a whole other level of Neon that I had no idea was down there. Hmm. I'm just like, where... <laughs> I've been here for 10 hours and I had no idea this was down here. My character's supposed to be from here. And I didn't know that this was here. I'm a street rat that didn't know a second half of the city existed. 
I keep running into things anyway. I was You're like, Hank Hill when he goes to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> d- d- didn't realize that whole back room was there. They were just Spend staying the in the... entire time in the greeting room. St- yeah, spending the entire time in the room where you take your shoes off and that's all it's for. Um, yeah, I went into Neon and I went to go sell stuff to one of the stores and the guy's like... The guy just starts telling me about how he's got a real problem with this other store owner because the other store owner's being a dick and won't stop paying... Won't show up to any of the merchant meetings and is paying off security. And I'm just like... You want me to go talk to him? Because <laughs> yep. I, I can't I can't help myself. I need to do quests. Mm. I need to do quests. That that's what I mean about the exploring, is that I have I have found so many different people that need quests, and a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them are just kind of open and shut quests. Where it's just you go here and talk to the person. And there are there are ways that you can resolve it. Like sometimes there's two ways you can resolve it. You can do what the person wanted you to, or you resolve it in a way that they're not they're not gonna be happy about. But I have had so much fun just going from place to place and talking to different people and just doing little random side quests. All right. It's been a lot of fun. That's I guess that's what I mean about exploring. I've even had moments, and yeah, I know I know that the planets are all kind of desolate and empty. Like, I get it. Yeah. It doesn't make me as mad as it makes some people mad. It makes some people really fucking mad that the planets are just, like, empty and desolate. But I've en- I've enjoyed just warping to a different system and just going up to a planet and landing on it and just seeing like, ah, eh, what's down here? Poke around for a couple minutes. Cool. Got it. All right. Go somewhere else. Yeah, dropping down to poke around sounds fine. You know, you go down there, you see, oh, there's some iron and maybe some water here. Maybe there's a factory over there. But trying to complete the survey. I actually did that, I believe, today. I was like, I'm going to go try and survey an entire star system. And I went there. And if you try to 100% any moon or any planet, you have to go a couple kilometers around the entire planet, going to all these various locations, talking to all these... Well, not really talking. Going to all these yeah. facilities. Serving... I, I went to three caves, and there was basically nothing in there. And each time I came out of a cave, there was a randomly generated miner who welcomed me at gunpoint and said, what are you doing? I saw these minerals first. And I would say... I haven't ever, I haven't ever seen that dude. Holy shit. I, I saw him three times in a row. Not All necessarily right. the one guy. It's, like, it's always a randomly generated person, so it's always different. But the third time, I just shot him, and the companion I was traveling with got on my case. Like, oh, man, this person disliked that and also hated that, and they're also lambasting you and chastising you. Was like, he pointed a gun at me. There were, there were been a couple of moments where I, I feel like my actions have been justified, and the game is scolding me and I, I don't care for it what companion do you have with you i that for that mission i had coal uh, i just had coal for that mission for oh me. okay i yeah i have not traveled much with coal i've traveled generally with sarah for the most part and also maybe andrea but yeah coal was made with me because i was in the mission uh, also in the process of doing his mission so yeah. he was just getting on my case i just got andrea with me I, I I just I like just found her. Mm. I basically got rid of Sarah Morgan almost immediately. Yeah, she's just too much of a goody. T- she's boring. Eh. She's too much of a goody two shoes. It's kind of the same as like Preston, where it's just like if you do anything even remotely wrong, remotely bad, mm. they she just immediately is mad at me. I'm just like, you said you had criminals working in <laughs> in Constellation. Yeah, come on. I have the wanted perk. You knew what you were in for. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people criticizing that. I chose the UC background for my character, so having a UC specific command, she's like she likes people that do UC stuff. So okay, uh, I have actually been having a good time traveling with Sarah so far. Out of the three companions I travel with, Andrea has been nice, but I like Andrea because she's definitely more morally ambiguous than uh, than than Sarah is. So far, they've all been kind of forgettable and not all that interesting to me. See, I really, I actually really like Andrea so far, but I haven't. Or Andrea, I don't know how the fuck you pronounce yeah. her name. I actually really uh, like Andrea so far, but. Since you've been talking about how much you've enjoyed this game for quite a while now, mm-hmm. why don't I tell you about my experience, and maybe you'll have a better understanding of why I don't see this game quite so favorably. Okay. So when I first started this game, the first thing that I immediately noticed is that everyone in the prologue area had plot armor. They had the essential tag, or the cannot interact with tag. I could not beam anyone down and kill anybody. And I thought, okay, this is just the introductory area. They want but, me to go through it smoothly. But why would you want to do that? I was just testing it out. But why? I was just testing it out. Because it's the prologue that you... Well, you can't kill anybody at the beginning of Skyrim either. I was just testing it out. And I, like, I gave it a pass. I said, it's the introduction. I'm giving it a pass. You know, it, they just want me to get through the introductory sequence. They don't want me to break it. That's mm-hmm. fine. But as I played the game, I realized every single person who has a name 
has the essential tag. They have applied the essential tag to every quest giver and basically anyone you're supposed to interact with for a quest, you are not allowed to break or fail a quest, at least unless they have a specific fail option. My my counterpoint to that is the alternative is Skyrim, where barely anybody has the essential tag, and a dragon shows up in the town and kills <laughs> everyone, and now you can't complete a quest, or you can't get a new quest, because everyone's fucking dead. Fair enough, yeah. That's, that is my that is my counterpoint to it's it. It's a fair counterpoint. I'm not necessarily saying it's the worst idea. It's a specific design choice that Bethesda has made for this game. In previous games, some characters had plot armor and some didn't. And I would have preferred it if they went one way or the other with it. It would have been nice if they went New Vegas's route and everyone is killable. But instead they went the opposite route and basically no one who is essential to the story or the side quests or the faction quests can be killed and that's that's a thing whether or not you think it's good or whether or not you think it's bad it's personal preference it's a choice they've made um but that was the first thing i noticed mm -hmm. and then i went through the opening sequence so the background that i chose for my character was medic i chose the combat medic role which comes with the medicine perk that has the specific effect of letting me heal more with medicine but i thought you know i'll take the combat medic roll and i'll role play as a combat medic but i really haven't been given that much of an opportunity to when people are injured on the ground i don't really have a choice to interact with them yeah, but you can't do that in fallout new vegas either if somebody's if somebody's injured in fallout new vegas you can't and you have like 100 in medicine and all the related medicine perks you can't heal other people there have been times in new vegas where you can use your medicine skill to heal somebody that is injured uh, there's the the mole rat that's injured, for example. There's people wounded in tents that need medicine skill. I've I've had plenty of opportunities to be a medic in that game. What I'm trying to say is you're you're arguing this point as if it was well, why can't I heal the random and why can't I heal this NCR soldier that's laying on the ground during the intro to the frontier? My point is that I'm trying to roleplay as a combat medic mm -hmm. because that was presented to me as an option, but there has been no opportunity for me to be a combat medic. I've, I've played for 20 hours. I haven't healed anyone. The only thing that being a combat medic does is give me a couple of perks like the medicine skill, which all that does is make stim packs heal more. The only time it's come up in conversation, I have had one medicine check, and that was an intimidation option. It wasn't to heal anyone. It was to say, I know what happens to the human body when it's exposed to the vacuum of space, and that's going to happen to you. That was the only time that I could use the medicine perk. So I have not had a great experience with that, that I, the role-playing aspect. I feel like there's a lot more to it. You just probably need to talk to some of the people that would be more aligned with your field. So like if you go and talk to some of the doctors, because I've had two things I can think of off the top of my head where I've done missions for NPCs that are doctors in game. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the combat medic perk. Hmm. But I would presume that something like that would come up when you're talking to them. Possibly. I, I I don't know. I kind of feel like what you're saying is, I picked the baker perk and then I went to a brick factory and they won't let me do anything with baking. I have had a lot of minor problems. And this is a minor problem, you know? It's not... This, this thing, this one instance by itself, wouldn't be game-ruining experience for me. But it's a lot of little things. And mm -hmm. that's one of them. So... You know, everyone's got the essential tag. All right, I'll have to adapt to that. My combat medic role that I chose doesn't seem to have any in-game effect in the first 20 hours I've played. Okay, I'll have to deal with that. So let's talk about the combat, because I don't think the combat in this game is very good. I like the dynamic being able to use my jump pack. That's certainly very useful for mobility's sake and being able to uh, get into advantageous positions. But I really don't feel like the combat's all that great. Uh, my usual complaint of there being too many weapon calibers seems to be exacerbated more here because I, d I don't think the combat is very good. It's a lot of stand in one spot and shoot the enemy until my gun is empty. Then I hide behind cover and then I jump out again and start shooting him. Everyone's got the same health. There's like no different types of health. It's just everyone is weak to bullets. And maybe for really tough enemies, maybe I'll try to use a stun gun or a, a, a stamina draining gun to stun them for a few seconds so that we can there's, keep on dumping bullets into them. I don't think that there's a problem of too many too many calibers in this game. It's more of you need to find you need to find the the weapons that work for your specific playstyle. 
Hmm. And I feel like the combat in this game just feels like Fallout 4. It feels basically the same as that. And I don't want to say, like, you're, you're saying it feels like you just stand in one spot and shoot until your gun runs out. I feel like that's more of a you problem than the game problem. Okay. Not I I, I don't want to say that, but I feel like that's more of you need to you need to be doing you need to be more mobile. And in terms of like everyone's weak to bullets, I mean, yeah, of course everyone's weak to bullets. There's <laughs> there, I mean, there are other enemies that have like multiple health bubbles, and those ones are the ones that drop like so it, instead of doing the the stupid Fallout 4, it's a legendary enemy. The legendary enemy has mutated. Instead of doing that, you now have enemies with one, two, or three, I think three might be the maximum. Maybe there's four. Four. There's four, at least. There's four. So you have a standard enemy, and then an enemy with a shield and two health bubbles, and an enemy with shield and three health bubbles, and an enemy with shield with four health bubbles. And they're the ones that drop the better items. And then, yeah, you can get weapons. Like, I have a laser gun that one of its one of its perks is that it uh, does more damage to shields, which is their, like, little shield health bar. Okay. For me, I think it's just a matter of... Finding weapons that work with your specific playstyle. Like, I found a weapon that does... The damage it does increases on consecutive hits. Okay. So if I can get multiple hits on an enemy, it does even more damage. I will say that in terms of weapons, I don't like that it's just randomly assigned to traits. Because the amount of times I've found a, a fucking gun with the ability Berserker on it. And I hate that ability. <laughs> Berserker is the ability where the weapon does more damage the less armor you have. But armor is the only thing that's fucking keeping me alive at this point. Mm -hmm. So why would I want to take off the armor so that I can do more damage with a weapon? Uh, maybe, I think that's incredibly stupid. Maybe someone else's playstyle would make use of that, I suppose. Maybe. I guess if you're running like a really fast, really lightweight, like melee character. But then it doesn't seem like the armor weight really affects your running speed. Mm. So I don't understand what the benefit of using less armor is unless it's really early game. And then it's, then it's like, okay, well, you made a good weapon that's really good early game, but it just completely falls off late game. Sure. I don't think there's too many calibers. I, I, think, it's, I think it's fine because you have a bunch of different weapons. And thematically, to me, it makes sense that you have weapons that are made by all these different companies in different areas. Of, some of them are made in United Colonies. Some are made in Freestar Space. Mm. So they're going to be in different calibers. And then one of the things that you can do on weapons is you can modify them to use different calibers however that goes back to the the fucking weapon modification in this game which is garbage and i hate it yeah it's not great i will i will agree with you that the crafting in this game absolutely sucks mm. it is miserable i hate doing it yeah the crafting and the base building because the base building in fallout 4 when you have your little settlement there's the workshop in there and the workshop is its storage is infinite mm. you can put whatever into it yeah in this one you have to build separate containers on your when you build when you build a base because I've built one base so far. I haven't even tried to do a base. I built yet. one base and I was like, "This sucks and I hate this." <laughs> I built one base and you have to put storage containers down. And each storage container has a limited amount of space. And you could just build a bunch of storage containers and just throw resources into them. But the problem is, if you throw resources into a storage container, that storage container does not quote unquote talk. To the things you use to make stuff. It doesn't talk to the research station. It doesn't talk to the manufacturing station. It doesn't talk to the armor crafting station. It doesn't talk to the weapon crafting station. So if you want to craft a weapon with resources that you put into that storage container, you have to go to the storage container, pull them out of it, and then go use the thing. The way you get around that is by building resource containers. And there's a liquid resource container, a solid resource container, Jeez. a component resource oh, container, yeah. and a, like, a warehouse, which is for miscellaneous stuff. Mm. And those have limited space too. Okay. I don't know how much space they have, but basically if you want to store, if you have like 5,000 copper, mm. you have to build like six storage containers to store all of that copper. Okay. The reason I have such a high disdain for survival crafting games is because I've played a lot of them. Mm. I've played, I used to play a, a decent amount of Minecraft where it was modded. Okay. And it was a lot of like resource gathering and building stuff. Mm. If you want to do Minecraft with mods where you're doing resource building or resource harvesting and crafting and you have a fucking, you've built a 8-bit computer inside the game that organizes where all the stuff goes to <laughs> with little conveyor belts going over. If you want to play Infinifactory or Satisfactory, then play those games. Why are you trying to put it in Starfield? I don't want to do crafting. Fortunately, you don't have to for the most part. Yeah. 
You can basically just avoid it. As I have been. I've been ignoring that. I have not done a whole lot of crafting. I've been able to ignore that because it's not great. Mm -hmm. I didn't even try and do base building because I knew I wasn't going to like it. It's not fun. I don't like it. I, yeah. I if did, I had known I the didn't base even give building, it a chance. If I had known the base building would have been so was so bad, I would have picked the perk of that you start with a house that you can store <laughs> stuff in because then at least I have a place I can display my cool stuff. Sure. I don't want to build a base and then have to worry about where I'm going to get this resource from and this resource and oh no, how am I going to do that? I don't want I hate doing that. To yeah. the point that I've actually been avoiding picking up most resources. Yeah. Because it's just like I don't want this. And if I do need if I do need this component at some point to modify a gun, then I'll just fly to a bunch of different systems until I find the component I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of minor annoyances with that, but I guess we'll cycle back around to combat, which is what I was talking about, but then we kind of... Yeah, we kind of got off. I, I don't think the combat is bad. I think I don't like the basic gameplay loop. I feel like it's a bit too Borderlands-y, where I'm just finding... Con I'm just constantly finding epic and rare and legendary guns, and every three minutes I have to stop and decide, do I want to keep this gun or add it to my pile of guns? I've got so many guns. Is it better? I, I'm comparing mm. numbers. I, I don't really care. I don't, I don't get that at all because basically all the gun, the majority of guns I find are the standard quality. And basically what I do, when I'm playing this game, what I do is I just pick up all the guns that I find. Mm. And then once I'm done with combat, I look at what I found. And for the most part, usually when I'm picking up stuff, I can see whether it's blue or purple or, go or gold. I can look at those those things, and at a glance, I can basically be like, I'm going to hate this gun, or I'm going to like this gun. Hmm. You mentioned before that this combat is not that much different than Fallout 4's, and I will admit that that's pretty true, yeah. It's, it's pretty similar to Fallout 4's combat, but I'm not just comparing Starfield to all of Bethesda's previous games. I play other games that Bethesda hasn't made, mm -hmm. believe it or not. I mean, I... You wouldn't know that from looking at the channel. It's a lot of Bethesda. But I have played a lot of other games that do combat better, that do per the persuasion dialogue system better. I feel like this game is mediocre in a lot of ways if you start comparing it to games that Bethesda hasn't done. Well, let me just take the dialogue system. We'll take a, we'll put a pin in the, the combat because mm -hmm. obviously you and I aren't agreeing on that. Let's talk about the persuasion dialogue system. So... The speech checks are back, and it's done a lot better compared to previous Bethesda games. It's not just a simple binary choice. You have to do, like, a, a couple different things. You have to choose a few different options and actually have, like, a, a back and forth. It's still kind of a, a discussion mini game, mm -hmm. And it's probably, no joke, it's probably the best way that Bethesda has done speech checks. But it's still bad. It's still based on random chance, so it still incentivizes save scumming. So if you if you feel like you're not gonna pass it, you just save and then try it again until you get it. So that's not great, and it's also really easy to figure out the pattern. I figured out that going yellow, yellow, green, green, green is usually like I've used that pattern and I've won the majority of my speech checks. I don't actually, I don't really consider the ramifications of what I'm saying. I just pick yellow options until I'm near the end and I start picking green options, and that that's usually the best way to do it. The way that the persuasion conversations play out is a bit odd, too, because you're taking a mix of intimidation and then sympathy. You're playing good cop and bad cop. You're just omni-cop. You'll start threatening them, and they'll be threatened, and then you'll say a sympathetic line next, and it, the conversation is very disconnected from itself. I agree that the the, the way the conversations play out in the... I've, I've had a couple of them that are actually custom written for the scenario that you're in. I've had a couple that are actually done like that. But a lot of the kind of random ones, like if, if a guard catches you and you, you're you trying to convince the guard to let you go, because that is something, sometimes that can pop up. You can try to just persuade the guard that, hey, no, never mind, you didn't see anything, go away. Mm -hmm. Those ones are kind of, it's just all like canned dialogue of, do you see where I'm coming from? Man, you're really starting to annoy me. Just like things like that, that is kind of crap. Well, even during the quest lines, like the bank robber is another example where you're, I'm taking a mix of threatening options or I'm telling him, I'm trying to sympathize with him. I'm trying to be like, hey, man, they're innocent. You shouldn't let innocents do this. And then the next conversation option I'll pick, I'm going to pistol whip you if you don't let them go right now. You're not really choosing to intimidate or choosing to persuade. You're just choosing the options you feel like will have the most success. I agree that they're not properly written. I feel like usually they give you a decent amount of options so that you can try to pick only the ones that would be like the more appealing to them ones. Or you could, if you're playing a, a more evil character, you could just pick the ones where it's, you're just telling them you're going to beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like they usually give you a good amount of options to choose from on that. I think that this is far superior to any other speech option that Bethesda games have had up until this point. Because the alternative is Fallout 4, where it's just, you have just a percentage, and you just save right before you do it, and then just keep hitting A until you get it. Or Fallout New Vegas, where you're putting on different clothes and slamming a bunch of drugs and then reading like... <laughs> so you're standing in front of somebody and they're like, I'm not going to sell you this cheeseburger. And you're like, wait a second. I'm going to put this jacket on. I got a hat. Here's some glasses. I put the glasses on. Let me finish reading this book really quick and take two Tic Tacs. All right, you going to sell it to me now? And they go, oh my God, yes. I am not disagreeing with you at all. I agree that Starfield's speech system is the best thing that Bethesda has the best way that Bethesda has handled speech. But again, I've played other games that do persuasion and speech much, much better. Like, what do you mean? What, what, uh, give me an example. The Council. The one I'm thinking of is The Council. The Council is like a, a Telltale-style detective game. You don't really do any combat. You're just talking to people in that game. And the boss battles are... You're, it's kind of like the persuasion system. So when I saw the persuasion system in the trailers for Starfield, I thought maybe they're taking a page out of the council's book. Because in that game, if you know more about your opponent, the person you're speaking to, you can select options that you know that they'll be receptive to. Like, I, I'm talking to historical figure George Washington, and I know that he enjoys my appeal to nationalism, but I know he doesn't like liars, so I'll try not to deceive him. But I also looked in a drawer, and I found that he's got... For an example, like maybe I found out he's got a twin brother and I could bring this up in the conversation against him. Those conversations feel good. I'm learning things in the past and then bringing them into the conversation. And I'm talking to the opponent and it's it's like a boss battle with words. That is probably the best speech system I've ever seen in any video game. And it Starfields does not even come close. My, com my, my counter argument for that is that is a game that is built entirely around their speech system. They, they really enjoyed that speech system and they really wanted that to be their selling point. This is a game that's built around flying around in space that has a speech system in it. It's the difference between playing Bass Pro Fishing 2023 and playing game with fishing mechanic in it. Yeah. Okay. The game with a fishing mechanic in it, the fishing mechanic isn't going to be great, but it's in there. The game where all you're doing is fishing, the fishing is, should be really good. Well, that's kind of a moot point because most fishing games are shit. Um, you're right. I shouldn't be comparing the dialogue system in this game to the one that's got a dedicated dialogue system. The dialogue system in the council is perhaps the best I've ever seen, and I wish more games would use something similar. Mm -hmm. But it's not fair to criticize Starfield for not having this kind of system. It's a very complex system, and they wanted something simpler. But I think the dialogue system is still... It, it shouldn't be random percentage-based. I feel like that's a real problematic area. If they wanted to go simple, but still be good, they could have taken a page out of Telltale's The Walking Dead back from 2012, because that system is very simple, but I think it's also really good. Or at least it was for its time. It still holds up. There's no percentage-based chance of passing things. You're generally just given four options to choose from, and I know four options doesn't sound like a lot, but when they actually have an effect, it does feel like a lot. So I think that system is simple, and they could have done something for this game, and they chose not to. They they made the design choice to not have a persuasion system, and instead went for a persuasion minigame. And once I realized that, I was disappointed. And it's going to take a little bit of time for me to accept that. It, it's not what I wanted. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's, it's, it's still a fun mini game. I still don't think it should be percentage-based chance. I, I think that's a real... I think that's a real misstep there. I don't have a problem with the persuasion mini game they have. The only problem I have with it is that to avoid having people save scum, you cannot save in the middle of when you're having a conversation with someone. Sure, but you could also just reload from when you entered the door and started talking to somebody. Yeah. I don't think the persuasion system is bad. I don't think it's incredible. But I don't think it's bad. Um, I think it'll do its job, and once I'm used to it, maybe it won't be such a big deal for me. When I when I was when I was playing it, because I was playing it last night, of course. Mm -hmm. When I was playing it, I noticed that when you talk to people, there are generally some options that are directly related to that to the person and what you're talking about. So, for example, this guy is like, "Oh well, I want you to. I'll, I'll let you into this area, but you have to do a favor for me," mm -hmm. and. 
I did the persuade thing because I was like, I don't want to do that thing. Sure. I don't want to do the favor for you. I just want you to let me in there. Mm-hmm. So I did the I did the persuasion. And one of them, one of the options was like, oh, well, this will be mutually beneficial for both of us if you just let me in there. You don't need me to do this favor. But then one of the other options was just like a generic kind of intimidation option of, I don't like your tone. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, I, I can tell that some of them were actually written for those. And then some of the other ones were just cut paste ones that they just had a bunch that they could just grab and throw into it. Ah, I see. So I wonder, I wonder how many of them are tailored persuasion options that you can pick from and how many of them are cut paste. I don't like your tone or, you know, you're just going to say yes eventually. I do wonder if there is more going on under the hood because each of these different speech options is marked as green, yellow, or red, depending on the difficulty level. But maybe... There's some nuance there. Maybe there are some options that are marked as being yellow, but if you know the person well, you know that that's secretly like guaranteed to succeed. For for a, actually, for example, I had one. There's one speech option that you can do towards the beginning of the game. It's it's at the beginning of the constellation quest. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but basically, you get another speech option is added onto that because of the companion you have with you. Yeah. Where your companion says something to the person. Mm-hmm. And that has like a really high chance of succeeding. Yeah. And I've taken the negotiation perk, which basically just lets me bribe people in the middle of those persuasion checks, which opened up not just one, but two different persuasion checks. I could use the negotiation to give them a lot of money, and that was green, mm-hmm. more likely to work. Or I could do like a more stingier one, and that was less likely to succeed. I, maybe the more you play this game, the more options will open up, and maybe there'll be a whole list like 20 different options and maybe it's maybe it's more complex than it seems maybe the tailored speech options even if it's a red or a yellow has a higher chance of succeeding because it actually pertains to the conversation i don't know what's going on in the computer when you do those speech options Mm -hmm. and i don't know if there's that much depth to it like at the end of the day this is a bethesda game so (laughs) yeah maybe maybe there's some parts where they just kind of went eh, do whatever And that's kind of how I feel about Starfield. I feel like they've tried to do a lot of different things, base building, exploring, conversation systems. I feel like they do a lot of them mediocrely. I don't think the speech system is good. The crafting system is bad. I don't think exploring planets is interesting. I can get to that in a little bit, but I tried that and I didn't have a lot of fun with that. I think some of the quests have been good, but I've also played quite a few quests I did not like. And I feel like my experience with Starfield... I may have randomly stumbled into some quests that were definitely not my cup of tea. And we were talking about this a while back. I was telling you I wasn't having a great time, and you were having a good time with it, and you told me, just give it some time. I've been exploring, and I was like, all right, maybe I'll take Zach's advice, and I will explore a few planets. And I did a couple of random quests. Like, someone came up to me and said, here's a quest for you. And I did it, and it was just a half hour straight of shooting spacers. And then once I was done shooting the eight waves of spacers, I had to go into the stratosphere and kill waves of spacer ships. And I remember at one point, I distinctly remember this, I had just done a tough space battle. I had killed four spacer ships. I was on my last legs. My ship was barely holding together. I was out of repair kits and I'd killed all these spacer ships. And then, boom, seven more show up. Here's another wave. And that was the point that I broke and I said, no. And I opened the console, and I said, kill all. And I killed them all. And I have no regrets. And since then, I have been using that a lot. I have been using the kill all command quite a lot. I I feel like you and I are playing completely different games. It's possible. I I don't understand how you're getting all the MLG Pro Gamer missions. I've had a lot of, well, maybe not a lot. I've had a few missions in rapid succession that were just kill, 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 kill. And then if I try to do some of the exploring, like you suggest, I'll stumble upon an abandoned facility. Oh boy, I can't wait to explore this abandoned facility. It's probably going to have some haunting music. Maybe I'll see some environmental storytelling. No, it's just spacers, just pirates, just humanoid people for you to kill. Waves of them, kill your way through them. Maybe there'll be some interesting loot, maybe a a purple gun. That'll be cool. I really don't care. The, The exploring planets has been very not fun for me. I don't like looking at the minerals. I don't like scanning lead for the, on the fifth planet so I can fill out my dossier on the planet because there's thousands of them like it is procedurally generated you go to the soul system and it's not just you know like three or four planets that you can explore you can explore a lot of moons around Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune and stuff like that there's a lot of astral bodies to poke around on and there is just so much 
like Skyrim, breadth of an ocean, depth of a puddle. I feel like that's not the case for this game at all. From my experience, it has been. What I have been doing is going to the major settlements and I'm talking to the people in the major settlements and they usually will give you missions to go out to different areas mm -hmm. or talk to different people. And it's a lot of going into a settlement and talking to a person and basically just exhausting the dialogue through that person. And I've had other ones where it's like, the, it's the same thing as in Skyrim where you're walking around and someone's like, oh, this guy's standing out by a tree and just looking really exasperated. And it's like, go talk to the dude standing by the tree. So I did. And that's turned into a much longer mission than I thought it was going to be. And it wasn't just, oh no, this tree is dying because there's spacers shooting zombie rays at it. Go kill the spacers. It's actually been, I need you to go here and talk to this person or talk to this person. It hasn't just been, go kill more spacers. Yes, when you go to a planet and you're wandering around on the surface, that can be in, that can be really boring because it's it's all procedurally generated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it's just a facility that's it's the same facility that you've seen like six times now. It's just there's just a bunch of different facilities. Like I said, most of most of where I've been getting my missions from is from going into a town and talking to the people in that town. Yeah, I will agree that like the procedural generation isn't it's not great. And it's kind of weird that, like, the capital of the Freestar Collective has just one town <laughs> on the planet. And there's, like, there's, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff on the outskirts of the town. They gotta work with what they did. They made a whole fucking planet. They can't literally populate the entire fucking planet. And it's like, if you play Mass Effect, you can't explore the entire Citadel. There's, like, three areas you can go on the Citadel. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not asking to explore the entire planet. In fact, I think they gave us too much planet to explore because there are vast distances between landmarks and I, I, it's so boring to go from one next. I legitimately used a console command to move at 500% speed so I could bounce from location to location because otherwise it would take me half an hour to 100% survey a single location, a single moon. There are vast distances separating anything interesting. And when I say in anything interesting, I see like a cave popping up in the distance a kilometer away. And so I'm bouncing towards it and there's nothing there. And then I go to the facility that's another 800 meters away and there's nothing there. So exploring planets has been incredibly boring and I hate it. Crafting has been incredibly boring and I hate it. Persuading people, it, it, I kind of got a system now. It feels good to be able to pass them, but it's not great. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done with combat, too. I, I've started to spam kill all... Every time I go into location and I, I see there's another group of spacers, I go, oh, this again, kill all. And I, I don't have to worry about... Uh, I don't have to worry about killing innocent civilians like I would in previous games because they all have plot art. They've all got the essential tag. So kill all, skip the combat, and then see what quest was here. I feel like you typing in kill all into the menu is hypocritical because there's been multiple times where we've been recording Fallout New Vegas and you're like, no, don't use a grenade launcher because that makes it too easy. Mm. Stop using a grenade launcher. That makes it too easy. Sometimes, yeah. I want you to at least try it. And you usually do. And then on your fifth or sixth death, you use a console command and I'm like, all right, cool. We'll roll with that. And I'm, I'm fine with that. But there have been... There was so much combat for me that I... If, if I didn't have access to that console command, I would have been bored and walked away. Because there was just so much combat going on. And I, I spent 20 minutes cutting my way through this facility. The, the facility which was designed so labyrinthine. It didn't make any sense from a structural engineering standpoint. It was just go, go into this room. Then go to the hallway. This hallway. This hallway. This hallway. Just going through the entire thing. Killing spacers. And then like I ran out of healing items and I died. And the game wanted me to do that all over again. And I wasn't going to. So I just use the console command. Well, I'm sorry that you're not liking it. I, I I don't know what else to say other than I'm sorry that you that you're having a really bad a really bad time in it. Yeah, I don't think a lot of things in this game are that great, but I I've started to do some of the um, faction quest lines, and I've started to have a better time. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the Vanguard quest line was that great. It felt very linear. I mean, it's it's interesting enough, you know, when you and I eventually do a series on Starfield, because I still think there's like... How much of the Vanguard quest did you do? Like, three or four missions. Three or four of the major missions in the Vanguard quest line. I thought it was okay, but kind of linear. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of variance. Because I... it get... You're, you're talking about the mission where they're like, oh, deliver these supplies to this colony. It'll be fine. It'll be a really quick mission. I'm talking about the mission where deliver this Terramorph sample to a, a scientist. Okay. Because that does, that does get more involved as it goes on. It's not... 
just that. And I've, I've actually had a lot of fun with that so far. I think it's okay. I thought it was all right, but it didn't really entice me. And then I played more of the, the main quest line where it's going around and gathering more artifacts. Mm -hmm. And I my eyes kind of glazed over. And I wasn't really interested in that. I did some of the Crimson Fleet. So that's that's one thing I wanted to talk about. So I, I just did two of those missions where I was just going through waves of hallways, killing spacers. Mm -hmm. I did those two quests. I was not feeling great. And then I finally found a quest I thought I might really enjoy. I started doing the Crimson Fleet quest line. And the premise for that one is the UC wants you to go undercover and infiltrate the pirates. They tell you up front, we don't want you to betray your morals, try not to kill innocent people, but we understand you have to... You, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So you've got some leeway, but try to not lose your humanity while you're infiltrating the pirates. And I said, okay. And so I went to the pirates and I said, hey, I'd like to join. And they said, well, we have a test for you. We need you to go kill this guy who left the Crimson Fleet. No one leaves the Crimson Fleet. This guy left. Go kill him. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And I, I had the option of blowing up the ship he was on. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do that. I hailed the ship and I said, hey, I, I'm, I'm with... Uh, an official over here, yada yada, I'd like to get on your ship because I think there might be a crimson pirate aboard your ship. And I used the persuasion and I, he, I convinced him to let me on. And then I got confronted while I was on the ship by the captain. He's like, how do you think there's someone on my crew? How dare you? And I used the persuasion. I, I used the, all the dialogue. I talked him down. I convinced him that the person that was on the ship was bad. And he shot this crimson fleet pirate betrayer. And I thought, that's great. The pirates are happy. They're letting me in. I've been inducted into the pirates like they wanted me to. Mm -hmm. A bunch of civilians that could have been killed didn't get killed. I feel great. This is the first time I've had a great mission after those last two missions where I was just killing and killing and I was so bored. I finally had a mission that feels like it had multiple options. The quest was wrapping up and it wanted me to go back in and report to my superiors. Despite the fact that he said, we're going to go mission silent, you know, go, go join the pirates, we'll have limited contact. Every time you do a mission for the Crimson Pirates, you have to go report in and say, yeah, I did the thing you told me to do to the officials. But I was, I was happy. I was like, I did this. This is a fun mission. I had a great time. And I went to him and I said, yeah, I did this mission. And um, I'm infiltrated. I'm in the pirates now. And he said, I can't believe you would do that. How dare you kill that one man? He was innocent. You have one more chance. You were on thin ice. Don't do anything like this again. Don't forget about your morals. And I had to put the controller down and walk away. Like I was finally having fun. And then just getting an earful from this jackass. I was done with this game. So I've had some bad experiences with this game. Okay. Also, the lockpicking minigame is lame. It was fun for about a day, but now I never want to do it again. Eh, it doesn't bother me. It's fun. I, I thought it was mediocre. Then I started getting into it. This was really fun. And now I never want to do it again. I'm done. Yeah, it's it's whatever. It's boring. I, I it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. This it's way better than the stupid hacking minigame. I don't think there needs to be a minigame. I think if I have a did you pick, just let me in. Oh, just had to, you know, vent all of that out. Well there you go. Mike hates Starfield. Um and we'll ne we're never gonna play it on the channel. My bottom line is, I feel like this game is a lot like Mass Effect Andromeda or Dragon Age Inquisition in the sense that there is a good game here, but there's also there's no a lot good, of there's bad no good game, game here. In Mass Effect Andromeda. That game is just shit from top to bottom. Starfield has a good game, but there's a lot of bad game surrounding it that you have to carve your way through, and uh, you might not start having fun until you're 15 hours in like I did. I think it's an absolutely fantastic game, and if you don't like it, then fucking play something else. <laughs> I probably will. I probably won't force myself to play Starfield for that much longer. I mean, I eventually, I still, I still do want to play with it with you on the channel eventually because no, I think you it's, don't. I do. No, you don't. Like I, I, I legitimately think there's a good game here. We could have a lot of fun with it. But I feel like there's also a lot of busy work, a lot of minutia, a lot of things that I do not personally look for when it comes to playing a video game. I think that this game is exactly the same as Fallout New Vegas, and I really don't understand why you don't like it. I'm glad you are having a good time with it. You know, you've, you've played a lot of rough games, you know, that uh, Calypso Protocol wasn't what you're looking for, a lot of other bad games. And to finally have a game that you really enjoy, a Bethesda game no less, by all means, have as much fun with it as you can. And maybe I will keep playing it, because not just the, um, the blood... I keep wanting to call them the Blood Pack quest line because I feel like this game is so much like Mass Effect in a lot of different ways. But the uh, the Crimson Fleet, like that, that quest line, I did a few more missions in that quest line. Mm -hmm. It's good. I think the Crimson Fleet quest line is good. 
I have not tried the Ryujin quest line, but you say it's good. It just it... I've I've enjoyed it. the last mission in the, Re, the the last couple missions in the Ryujin quest line are kind of eh, they're not great because <laughs> the 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 stealth mechanics in this game are not good. Yeah, the stealth mechanics are. It's, it's not a stealth. It's game. it's annoying. It's annoying that they have the stealth mechanics in this game because it, it, it's like the stealth in this game is either all or nothing. It's there's somehow they can see your shoulder from 50 meters away when you're trying to like peek around a corner to see if they're there or you're standing two feet away from them, like full on sprinting behind them mm -hmm. and they don't realize you're there. Mm -hmm. That's a little annoying. I don't like the fact that some of the perks are, that some of the things in this game are hidden behind perks. Like the, the little sneaking meter, whether or not you're hidden, that is behind a perk. And I really do think it's because they really didn't want people to be playing stealth sniper if they didn't want to. Mm. Because that's kind of that's the, the that's the joke about Skyrim, and then everyone also becomes Fall, a stealth archer. You become a stealth archer, and then the same thing in Fallout New Vegas. You become a stealth sniper. Mm. It's like every sing so they were like, well, we're just gonna get rid of the, we're gonna make sneaking a lot harder, mm -hmm. so that you just just instantly become a stealth sniper. I, I I understand why they did it. It is annoying that I have to spend perk points to unlock that. Mm. It's annoying that you have to spend perk points to unlock boost pack training, but at least it's you can get it first thing off in the game. You don't have to wait until the end of the fucking game to get power armor training. Yeah. You can just get the boost pack, like, right at the beginning of the game. That's handy. I like... I like Boosting around has been a lot of fun, and I I stumbled across, uh, upon a legendary boost pack. It, it had this really cool effect where anyone that got close to me would explode into a ball of fire, and I thought, this is awesome! But it didn't have the jet pack on it. Oh, like, it was just a normal backpack. It was yeah. a backpack that set people yeah. on fire, and I thought it was awesome, but it didn't have booster, so I immediately dumped yeah, it, because there, the jump pack is so fun. There's a, One of the packs is, like, the ground crew, the ground crew pack, and it doesn't actually have any boosters in it. So, I like, anytime I find those, I'm just immediately, like, sell it, because I don't... <laughs> I understand thematically why they put it in the game because the ground crew is wearing it, but like, why it why doesn't it have a boost ability? Mm -hmm. Come on, seriously. I don't particularly care for the random perks dropping on guns because then you end up with a bunch of guns that have Berserker on them, and I hate the stupid Berserker <laughs> perk. Mm -hmm. Or you end up with one that's like, once again, I wish they would do invisibility right. They never do invisibility right in these stupid games because they have. There's one of the one of the things I have is a helmet that does the chameleon ability. So when you crouch, you go invisible. The problem is, when you go invisible, so does the gun you're holding onto. Which I realize thematically makes sense. But now, I can't fucking see where I'm aiming. Yeah. I can't see the sights anymore. I feel like there are a lot, a lot of little annoyances. And those do add up over time. For me, they have not added up to a point that I will not play this game. Mm-hmm. They're only minor annoyances that I basically just disregard them and I do other things. Other, I don't like the fact that the scopes are still an overlay on the screen that you completely oh, blanks out. Yeah, the, I'm not using any sniper rifles any, yet. Any scope, anything bigger than a red dot, whether it's like the short scope or the medium or long or whatever the hell it is, it is an overlay on the screen where the entire screen goes black except for the crosshairs. Mm, not great. It was the same thing as in Fallout 4, which means... I don't fucking use sniper rifles. Until we mod it. Yeah, we, sometimes we have mods allow, that allow you to have a better... Yeah, like the see-through scope. scopes or whatever. Yeah. There was there, Literally one of the mods I've seen is it basically makes it where the scope is still... It's still the crosshairs. It's still an overlay. But instead of just being black, it's just... Slightly blurred, maybe? It's slightly blurred. So you can still see the surrounding environment. That's the only way that I'm going to use... That I'm going to use scopes that's, in this game yeah that's a much better way to do it i feel like there are eventually man i looked at the nexus page and there's already like 129 pages of mods for this. yeah there's a lot of mods i feel like once the modding tools come out there will be a lot of ways to improve the experience i will immediately remove the lock picking mini game because i don't want to do that anymore um i feel like expanding the ship's capacity is very useful because there have been a couple of times i've been flying around i actually do the space battles sometimes i don't always hit kill all sometimes i'll try to do it legitimately and i'll go around try to scavenge the battlefield and then my ship's inventory is full so i'll get out of the seat go to my inventory yank a bunch of stuff out of the inventory throw it on the ground and then go back to looting the space that's because you have an attached cargo modules to your ship apparently i need to do attach cargo modules to my ship yeah if you're going to do space battles but you're not going to be doing crafting then just don't pick up anything Something that I need to keep in mind is that Bethesda Games and I generally don't get along well on the first try. When I play a game made by Bethesda, I usually don't like it for quite a long time. It's happened for every game in the past. Fallout 3 didn't understand how it worked, didn't understand the VAT system, didn't understand what I was supposed to do. My objective was to find my dad, but I'd been chased out of town, so all my leads were gone. I had no idea what to do or where to go. I hated it. I didn't understand it, and it took me a few years to come back to the game and try it again. 
and I like it now. Same thing for Skyrim and Oblivion. I didn't much care for the lore or the the medieval time period, this fantasy setting. I couldn't get into it at first, and it took me a bit of time to get into it. Fallout 4, I hated it. I beat the entire game, and I didn't have a good time. I was just basically forcing myself to play it. I was so annoyed that it was so inferior in so many ways to New Vegas. I was so disappointed. And I had to learn, don't talk to Preston Garvey, because he gives you awful quests. Don't do the... Base building, because I don't like base building. Do these parts of the game, don't do these parts of the game. I came back later with mods, and Bethesda had introduced the survival mode, which made things a lot more entertaining for a lot of different reasons. And I had played some of Fallout 76, so I now got more context than what an actual bad Fallout game looks like, so mm -hmm. I was able to appreciate Fallout 4 more. So it, it's really not too much of a surprise that I played Starfield, and for the first 20 hours or so, I had a bad time. I had to learn that the crafting mechanics and the exploration and so many other parts of this game I don't like. Some of them I don't like, some of them I absolutely hate, and I need to not play them. I previously compared this game to Mass Effect Andromeda and Dragon Age Inquisition by saying it's a good game, but it's wrapped in a bad game. And that's not fair because Starfield isn't wrapped in anything. You can go anywhere and do anything. I don't have to do any base building. I haven't done any base building. I don't have to do crafting. I don't have to do anything. You can skip the parts of the game that you don't want to play. And now that I know the parts of the game that I hate, I can skip them and probably have a much better time. If I turn the difficulty down on combat because I feel like enemies are too bullet spongy, I can easily do that. I, I will agree with you that enemies are too bullet, or enemies can be too bullet spongy. They do feel like that sometimes. I feel like a lot of the times the game the game levels the enemies faster than it levels the firearms that you have. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing firearms building, you can't really modify guns to do more damage. Right. And then there's me who's only carrying three or four guns because I find the concept of carrying 12 guns annoying and having to manage all the inventory, all the, am all the ammo types. I just want to use a couple of them. I still don't understand how you completely ran out of ammo when you were when you were fighting something, unless you were only carrying like one gun and then, then, then it makes sense that you ran out of well, ammo. Three, well, again... I was doing a lot of missions that required a lot of combat in rapid succession. Just by because the game is so open, I can I guess stumble upon a lot of these missions. That it's just nonstop combat, and like you said, the enemies are kind of bullet spongy at times, and sometimes they have four health bars, and it just takes a while to shoot through it sometimes. And I ran out of ammo, but there's always the option to turn the difficulty down. And if that's not enough for me, I can always abuse console commands and play through it like I'm doing some kind of story mode. Yeah, but now you don't get achievements anymore. I've stopped. I haven't cared I about it. I know you don't care about yeah. it. I, I know you don't care. Yeah. I've been, I've, I've still been getting achievements. This is the only reason I haven't modded the game is because I want to get a bunch of, as many achievements as I can. Mm. And when I do mod the game, I'm going to put the continue getting achievements on there. Sure. I stopped caring about achievements years ago and I'm not, I'm not getting achievements for Starfield and I don't care. But, uh, anyway. My point is that when I come back to this game in the future, I'll have a better understanding of the things that I like about it, and I'll be able to skip the parts that I don't like about it. Maybe there'll be more mods in the future that'll make some of the things I didn't like more enticing. I won't have to be doing the lockpicking minigame. I'll probably give this game a rest until the lockpicking skip mini uh, mod comes out. because I, I think there already is one, man. Pro probably. I'll install it later. But yeah, I don't think this is a bad game. I think this is a big game that tries to do a lot of things, and there's going to be... A lot of things that individual people don't enjoy. I don't care for the exploration. And the, for some people, the exploration could be the main draw. And they don't care about the quests. For them, they can skip the quests. They can survey literally a thousand procedurally generated planets. And if they have fun with that, going from location to location, taking a half hour, just listening to podcasts or something in the background, more power to them. This game has freedom. This game lets you play it as you want and lets you skip the activities you don't want and... I'm starting to appreciate that more. If that's been your experience with Bethesda games in the past is that you haven't enjoyed playing them at first, I guess it makes sense that you would have less enjoyment in this game. And I'm I'm sorry that you're not enjoying it as much as I am. It's disappointing. Nah, it's all good. I've genuinely enjoyed just flying around and visiting different planets. I think the difference between your exploration and my exploration is that I am almost exclusively exploring areas that have people on them. 
When I say I'm exploring, I mean I'm going to a planet that has a bunch of people on it. Oh. Or like a, a... A hub world. Or a hub world. Or I'm going to one of the dungeons that's in the game. Like I'm flying and finding a star station and then just running through the star station and killing all the raiders or whatever that's in there and looking at the environmental storytelling. Because when you go into the star stations or a hub world or a like an actual small settlement on a planet, those are the ones that, are actually, that have actually been tailored. When you just go to a random planet and just land somewhere mm -hmm. on the planet that's like generally going to be randomly generated yeah my, my thought process was i need to go to the places that are that have been custom built for the player to go there and have people to interact with sure and i was willing to give it a chance because even though i knew it was procedurally generated i don't necessarily think procedurally generated systems are bad as long as you can populate these maps with, in with interesting things then it's not necessarily a bad idea yeah. but they didn't really depends on where you go to and the, the when it when it comes to exploring the procedurally generated planets that's really more tailored to people that are going to be doing base building mm. and like i don't i'm not doing base building yeah. so one final positive note i will say is that this game this game seems to have the framework in place to have a great modding community because it's stable it doesn't crash it's it's got a lot of systems that can be improved with mods mm -hmm. but even if you like you could very well like the systems as they are and not need mods. I feel like it's a really good game. I've really enjoyed playing it. Can it be improved? Yeah, obviously it can be improved. It definitely can be made better. It's a Bethesda game. Yeah, it's another solid entry in the, the line of Bethesda games, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have a lot of fun with it over the years. I just didn't have a great first impression. I hope you continue to have a blast with this game, and I hope that when you and I eventually make a series on this, because, you know, I'd like to do that eventually... I hope I'll be able to see it more through your eyes. And who knows, maybe by the time we actually start a series, I will have played a bit more of this game and I'll be able to appreciate the things that it does right. Maybe. Maybe. Yep. <laughs>